I think this explains Kanye so well. I mean, he jumped in both feet. He just went 10 toes down in his faith and was like dropping albums, holding rallies, Sunday service every Sunday, training a choir, changing his life around, speaking out against cultural topics, telling women to dress more modestly. I mean, it was wow. It, it, it was wild. And then what does he say? The video we just watched. He says, I've got some problems with Jesus. On the other side of the conversion spectrum, in 2019, Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, put out his album, Jesus is King. He started holding Sunday services on his own property. He was very vocal and very bold about his faith. He said he was a servant of God. He was a servant of Jesus. That's what he was giving the rest of his life to. And then Kanye went into an absolute spiral. Uh, Kim Kardashian divorced him. He's having custody battles with his kids. He went into this huge anti-Semitic you know, ranting. He lost so many of his business opportunities. He lost the majority of his wealth. I think he's still worth almost half a billion dollars. So he's not poor, but he, he did have a net worth of like six billion. And so he did lose the majority of what he had. Recently, he was in an interview with Big Boy and uh, he had some really really harsh things to say about his disappointment with Jesus. Let's take a look. I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And, we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. All right. So Kanye is making a few different points here. Uh, the first is he's just disappointed with Jesus because Jesus didn't get on Kanye's agenda and he prayed for a lot of things and they didn't happen. And I don't want to belittle that because that can be very painful. And when people aren't given a, uh, a good frame of reference for how prayer works and what the call to follow Jesus actually is, then you can very easily conceive of Jesus almost like your magic genie, you know, and if, if you rub the lamp the right way and say the prayer the right way and give your money the right way, then Jesus should do everything that you want him to do. And that's not a biblical idea, but it's a cultural idea that's very easily uh, laid on to the, the biblical teachings. And so, then he goes into an idea of, you know, people just say, I'll, I'll pray about it. And they don't ever do anything about that. But that, that actually is a biblically supported concept where you, know, you are expected to go out boldly and to pursue the things of God. Now, the problem, on the other hand, is that Kanye right now is not always pursuing the things of God. A lot of his actions, activities, his speech have been very ungodly things. And this latest example is for anyone who, you know, put my cards on the table. When Kanye came out and said, I've, I've believed in Jesus, I celebrated. And I'm, I, that's who I am. That's what I'm going to do is however people are preaching, if Christ is being proclaimed, I'm going to celebrate that. And uh, we talked about it at Meta Church. I said very clearly, we don't know. I mean, I, we don't know anyone's journey. We're going to have to sit and watch. Uh, but I am going to celebrate anyone who comes to Christ, including Kanye. And I'm so glad that he did. However, now he's making moves. Uh, that are without a question, not Christ-like. So in the latest from Business Insider, Kanye West appears to confirm Yeezy porn site and is planning to work with Stormy Daniels' ex-husband. If Stormy Daniels rings a bell, that's because that is the woman who was paid hush money by former President Donald Trump, who he is now in litigation in court to see if there's going to be any kind of criminal indictment for that hush money. So all very twisted, interesting choices. 
It goes on to say, Ye, formerly known as Kanye, appears to have confirmed reports he's set to launch an adult entertainment site. In a post on his ex profile earlier this week that has since been deleted, Ye shared a short video announcing the new venture. The six second clip featured a voice directing followers to go to Yeezy.com while the screen read, Yeezy porn is coming. So, all of that is if you're a believer and you celebrated the Jesus is King album and you were excited about Kanye being in the camp, um, all of that is very, very disappointing. So how do we make sense of this? Um, I want to look at a really important parable that Jesus told while he was on earth. It's the parable of the sower. And to kind of summarize the parable itself, Jesus says that uh, a farmer went out to sow seed and some of the seed fell along the path and some of the seed fell uh, uh, on the outskirts of the field and some of the seeds fell among thorns and some of the seeds fell on good soil and you know jesus spoke in parables and a lot of times people didn't know exactly what he was talking about and there's a whole reason for that i don't have time to get into right now but he also explained the parable in matthew 13 to his disciples and so let's look at his explanation so listen to the parable of the sower when anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one sown along the path. And the one sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. But he has no root and is short-lived. And when distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now, the one sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on the good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word, who does produce fruit and yields some 100, some 60, some 30 times what was sown. Let's break this down and let's try to apply it into Kanye's life. When you would sow, the, the path has nothing for the seed to actually take hold in. And so the birds just come and swoop that up. A lot of people read this parable as if this is about three people who go to hell and one person who goes to heaven. Um, I, I don't believe that's accurate or that that holds weight with what the rest of scripture shows about putting your faith in Jesus and your belief producing eternal life that comes with the seal of the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. All of that is language of assurance, and we'll talk about assurance more in a minute. Um, really, this is about three believers living different uh, fruitfulness of life and one unbeliever. And the unbeliever is represented by the path where the, the seed never is able to take root. Now, None of us can know because I, I'm not in your mind, heart, or soul. I don't know your intentions. I can't say whether or not Kanye West sincerely believed, but that is what he said. And so to take him at his word, uh, I don't believe he's on the path because not only did he take it, but he had explosive excitement and joy for Christ almost immediately, which would be the rocky soil. Now, the rocky soil basically was the border along the field and it does have some soil, but that soil has been compacted, all scraped to the side in order to make the field, which means it has rocks in it. Now, something really interesting happens. Part of what makes a plant grow in the process of photosynthesis is heat. And so when a seed is in very uh, shallow soil and is sitting on top of rocks, the heat of the rock actually makes that grow the fastest. But the same thing, the rocks and the heat of the rock that made it grow fast also do not allow it to take root. And because it has no root, it is the first to bloom, but it is also the first to die. And when the, the heat from the sun comes back, it just withers the plant away. And so this is somebody who has a shallow, superficial faith that has not yet taken root in order to be able to withstand all of the burden of the elements around it. And so I think this explains Kanye so well. I mean, he jumped in both feet. He just went 10 toes down in his faith and was like dropping albums, holding rallies, Sunday service every Sunday, training a choir, changing his life around, speaking out against cultural topics, telling women to dress more modestly. I mean, it was, wow. it, it, it was wild. And then what does he say? The video we just watched, he says, I've got some problems with Jesus because bad things started happening and Jesus didn't fix it. And so let's look again. I, I want us to follow. This follows so well and so representative of, of how life actually works. The one sown on rocky ground, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, immediately drops an album, but has no root and is short lived. 
Why is it short-lived? When distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. And so, I mean, it, it just, it's almost a one for one. Distress came and in his distress, he went to the things of the world and he went wild. Now it's, it's worth noting as well, Kanye has been very open that he does struggle with mental health issues and we don't ever know where he's at on that or if he's medicated or if he's unmedicated, but we've all watched very publicly th this literal fall from grace. And I think that is the rocky soil, receives a word, shows fruit, but the fruit has no root. Now, how do you get from Jesus is king to Yeezy porn? Like that seems like such a dynamic shift. Well, what is the next grouping? The next grouping is the one sown among the thorns. This is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So it doesn't just wither away, it becomes unfruitful. It becomes worthless. You see, the seed that is sown, it is not native to the ground. The farmer has to go out, get the seed, bring it out, and sow it. The thorns are native. And the thorns, we think of thorns and we think the problem is that it's, it's like pokey. Well, thorns don't kill other plants because they're pokey, right? That, that's why they hurt us as kids. Uh, thorns kill plants because they literally steal the nutrients from the ground that those plants need to survive. They suffocate them. And it says that it is the worries of this age. And we know uh, that Ye is worried about a lot of things. He's worried about his reputation. He's worried about his status and the deceitfulness of wealth. And so I don't know this. This is a gut feeling. This is not proven. And so take it with as many grains of salt you, as you think it deserves. But the pornography industry is incredibly lucrative. It's one of the biggest industries on earth. Kanye was worth $6 billion and now he's worth 400 million. Those are the last estimates that I saw. He, he lost uh, a huge percentage of his wealth. I mean, 80% of his wealth, 90% of his wealth. And he would talk all the time about being one of the richest people on earth. He would talk all the time about it. It matters to him, the deceitfulness of wealth. Uh, Connie's been very open with his struggles with pornography. I guess he's embraced them now. It's also lucrative. And I think this is a path back to wealth for him an easy path in his mind. And what happens is when you are among the thorns and you don't clear those out of your life, you become the thorns. This is how you get from Jesus is King to the adult film industry in just a few years. And so we have the path, we have the rocky ground, we have the thorny ground. And what we're called to be is the good ground, the ground that has dug deep, and gotten rid of the rocks that has cleared out and gotten rid of the thorns that has opened up and received the word. But the word doesn't just bear temporary fruit. It's long lasting. It's enduring. It doesn't expect things of God. God isn't just there to serve us. We actually exist to produce fruit and to serve God. It's deeper and it's more mature. I think one of the problems is Kanye is a great example of the danger of post-conversion isolation. I, you see this so much in this whole, oh, I, spiritual, not religious. I, I agree with that to some extent in the sense that I don't believe Christianity is just another one of the world's religions. I think it breaks the religious model in almost every way. At the same time, this idea of like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll believe in Jesus. I'll just do my own thing. I think, especially for new believers, but for everyone, that can be incredibly dangerous. New believers need the church and they need the leadership of elders in the faith. They need to have people beside them who are kind of at the same place in their faith journey to hold them accountable. They need people ahead of them, someone that they can go to and get questions answered and wrestle with the text. And they need people behind them so they have the good accountability of being an example to someone else. You get none of that when you're out in isolation. You don't have someone to help go to the text and show you that we are actually called to suffer and suffering for Christ is where we meet Christ at the deepest level, that we're not, we're not just called to have Jesus as our genie and him to give us everything we want. Someone who could have lovingly called him on his actions and attitudes, many of which spiraled him into the chaos that he is now dealing with. And so let's get to the question on everyone's mind. Is Ye still saved? That's what a lot of people are asking. There are a lot of people who are uh, conditionalists, which means they believe you can lose your salvation. I think that's a completely 
uh, anti-biblical approach. Um, people read the New Testament as if the entire thing is a guidebook on how to get to heaven when you die, when in fact, the majority of the New Testament was written to believers about how to live the fullness of the Christian life following Jesus today and how to fare well at the judgment seat of Christ at the end of this life. Here's what Paul writes in Romans. He says, and who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, because of you, we were being put to death all day long. We were counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we don't have assurance of salvation, then our salvation is motivated by fear. And God is love, and scripture tells us perfect love drives out fear. And Kanye's story is not over. Um, if he continues down this path, he will continue to hit spiritual dead ends. And our prayer as believers should be for our brother, yea, that he would come back to Christ and that his story that is still being written would be a story of redemption and power and gospel proclamation. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner.